Arch Enemy hit our shores this Tuesday and to tell us more about it, I am joined by Charlie D'Angelo of the band. Charlie, how are you, man? I'm very good. How are you doing? I'm going really well. Thank you for getting up early. It's uh, extremely cool of you to do that. I want to know, though, man, how excited are you to get back down under? Oh, very, very. I mean, it's been a while now. Uh, I mean, it's been a while since we've, uh, you know, done anything, basically, you know, except for sort of a bit. Yeah. So, you know, of course, be just exciting to uh, get out there. And, and we you know we haven't been to Australia since, well, what was it? 18, 19. So uh, it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a minute. And when you're talking about you guys haven't done anything for a while, is that mainly due to the COVID lockdown side of things? I know the world's been opened up for a little bit now, but did that have a lot to do with it, I'm assuming? Uh, yes, absolutely, as, as with everybody else. Uh, we um, uh, we started out, so we did uh, the U.S. Uh, in, in uh, April, March uh, last year, and then we did uh, – European tour and a few festivals now uh, this this past fall, uh, so yeah, so that's that's basically been it like for the past whatever three years. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, especially like before that, it was all systems go kind of deal. But on the topic, getting back onto the topic of Australia, mm-hmm. Charlie, is there anything you just have to do when you get out here? Is there any Australian traditions or anything that you're like, man, as soon as I get back there, that's what I want to do. Uh, I don't know, Tim Tams. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. For people checking this out, be sure to give Charlie a pack of Tim Tams. Yeah. I had an American buddy come out here and he, he blames Tim Tams for his weight uh, gain and he's never gone back or something, he reckons, and he blames it all on Tim Tams. <laughs> no, but I mean, there, there's so much to me. It's just the, the general vibe uh, is something uh, – that's always nice. I mean, there's, there's just something about the country, how people are, uh, and that's something. And, you know, there's uh, there's the weather, which can be, like, good and bad. Uh, I'm a bit sensitive to high heat, but uh, I don't know what's the weather like right now. I tell you what, you might be in a bit of trouble because we are smack bang in the middle of summer, Charlie. So I yeah. think, um, <laughs> yeah, and it could be very high heat. And I wanted to talk a little bit to you about that. Being sensitive to heat doesn't surprise me because if someone said to me, describe a metal head, I'm going to say, Charlie D'Angelo of Arch Anime, you just look metal. Uh, what, is this, <laughs> what does it mean to you, man? Like, it's like you are textbook metal head. Uh, well, I mean, I would take that as a compliment. Uh, Definitely. <laughs> but don't really exactly know what it means, but I'll take it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, it's it's. Uh, I think I think if you if 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 you've been if you know if you've just been into metal like since your you know since your childhood or like early teens, it, 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 and just because it's not a mainstream. Um, form of music it's it's uh it you know it, it it becomes so much more if you just into whatever's on the radio of course then like i don't think it's like music doesn't really mean because there's so much available for you but something that you have to like seek out for yourself and then you find friends within people who like that it's like like-minded people and there's not so many of you uh, it becomes so much stronger yeah, there's definitely that sort of special bond, isn't there, Charlie? So yeah. on that topic, how did you discover metal? How did you get back, get into it back in the day? Uh, I think uh, I would say, I mean, it came from you know the seventies band called so so uh, you know for example you know Purple or you no know, Rainbow that kind of thing, mm-hmm. and then of course like as a kid you know do you discover Kiss? Which is always, you know, a good thing because you get, uh, you know, superheroes and uh, and rock bands, you know, all in the same package. So, but I think, I think it was like Judas Priest. It was like the band that I heard that went into what I now call metal, you know, rather than like hard rock. Um, yeah. So it was them, and then you know, seeing Made in live, and uh, and then it was also, you know just hearing Saxon on the radio. It was all that. It's like when, the, you know, the, the, you know, the first, you know, new wave of British heavy metal, all that. Yeah. No, that, yeah. 
That's really cool there, man. And so like, I just love the metal scene. I, I talk to a lot of metal heads and like, they just seem to be, it's a common misconception that metal heads are these big sort of evil people, but like the nicest people you'll meet, are like metal heads, I feel. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Yeah. Very rarely, uh, at least like my experience, have there been any, you know, any sort of like violence, uh, or anything like that at shows is very, very rare. Um, uh, mm. Even though, like these days, if, if you know, if you get your grandma to just look at a at a metal crowd today, I mean, it might <laughs> look violent, but you know, it it's not. <laughs> so, so you know, that's one thing. But yeah, if you compare it to like you know, say that you like a football game or something like that, and look at those exactly. things. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a very good way to look at it. There's more violence in a football game than what there would be in a in a metal uh, crowd any day of the week, I feel, man. So it brings me to the question, what would you be doing, Charlie, if you weren't involved in metal? Uh, I would be involved, um, you know, in some other type of music, I would assume, because, <laughs> uh, I mean, all my life has been that. So I really, really don't – I can't imagine and doing anything else. Uh so it's hard to say. I don't have one of those things as well. You know, on the um, you know on the side, I do a little bit of uh, you know, like, you know, I do a bit of rocket science. I don't, you know, because <laughs> <laughs> I can't see you. I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic there. So it's all music. And on the topic of music, you guys, of course, heading here next week, your latest album, Deceivers, is fantastic. Uh, can you tell us about the recording process of this one? Uh, yeah, so that was that was uh, a little bit uh, difficult, actually, just because of uh, all of a sudden, you know, more and more restrictions happened. Yeah. Uh, so it was difficult. And so there's a lot of the, you know, some of, some of the some of it was recorded in Denmark and, and just getting from Sweden to Denmark was really, really tricky. And so it, it was easier for, it was easier for us being Swedes getting in there, but we need, needed to have like a really good reason to enter Denmark because they had it closed down completely. Yeah. Uh, and since this is in the studio is in a rural area, it was easier because it's like, you don't really have like the lockdowns that you have in the cities. So it was easier uh, in that sense. But we also had, we had a singer that we had to smuggle in, <laughs> like, like going by a car from Germany to Denmark just to do it. It, it, it was, it was really, really difficult. Uh, That's crazy. So how did you manage to smuggle them in? Uh, it, it was all sorts of trickery, uh, you know, and 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 because it's the yeah, there's the, I think there's like the different levels of like you you can get a permit to, to get in, but it's hard for like an American or like an, a, Can a Canadian coming from uh, coming from Germany and going into Denmark, and then it's like all sorts of stuff. I think it, it was almost sort of like sneaking in at night, basically. <laughs> oh, that's awesome! Uh, man. It says like you'd write a movie about it. <laughs> <laughs> almost, yeah, yeah. So it's all sorts of that, and. But then uh, we had uh, we had uh, other things that we could actually do in Sweden, and uh, so that was easy. So I never had to do the sneaking into Denmark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. So wait, you were all in the same place at the same time. Is what you're saying, or, or was there like a lot of back and forth via email? Or uh, we, no, we, we had no, we had. But basically, we went in and we did all the drums in Denmark, and then all the guitars and bass and whatever we did in sweden and then, uh, yes, yes. then and then we went back to denmark to do the vocals wow uh, that's crazy is, it, is that the most yeah. out there sort of experience in recording arch enemy albums is that i suppose to be the most memorable yeah uh, yeah in many ways yes just because it was just yeah it, it, it was it, there was somebody just like put a big scoop of difficulty on the whole thing <laughs> Oh, that is awesome there, man. So um, I wanted to ask you also, like, apart from recording that album, what did you do to sort of keep sane during that COVID lockdown time? Um, well, the thing is, it wasn't that difficult here because Sweden was one of the more open countries. Uh, yeah. So it wasn't really like – it was like there was no public events. Uh, they kind of like – they banned – 
they banned like musical entertainment in restaurants and things. In restaurants, you have to sit down and could only be so many people and had to be like, you know, tables far apart and things like that. But we still had restaurants that were open. And then when they you know, when they realized that uh, that people were still going out, then they just sort of like cut off uh, all restaurants at eight o'clock in the evening. But that just meant that people just went home and had parties at home instead. So there was like a pre-party at a you know at a club or a bar somewhere, and then you do Westwood. So I have I have a friend uh, who works at one of the bigger breweries here, and their sales had like a humongous spike. <laughs> <laughs> I, tell, I tell you what though Charlie it sounds like Sweden was the place to be during lockdown because if we had have left the house we probably would have got shot on the street man yeah that's that's what I hear man it, it was pretty bad wasn't it yeah really really bad it sounds like you had it pretty good really man that's crazy no yeah yeah it, it, it was it, you know thinking back to it and, and and then especially back then like looking you know, just seeing the news and, and, and seeing how it was in other countries. So like it was it was almost normal here. Almost. Yeah, and then, really yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yet, you know, people complained. You're taking yeah. away our you know, don't take away our freedom. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, no, people always find a reason to complain. Yeah, it was very much end of the world scenario here for a bit and now it feels yeah. like it it never even happened man but yeah. uh, let's change things up off that doom and gloom for art for me anyway i'm just jealous of mm. you there man uh, i want to grab a movie recommendation off you charlie mm, a movie recommendation um well i can just do the the, the the well i think the last movie that i saw actually uh yeah two day, two days ago uh i managed to find um uh, a uh, good old classic from the Coen brothers. Uh, it's called Barton Fink. Oh, good one. Yeah, very, very good. Strange, slow, weird, but very good. <laughs> oh, there you go. You've heard it there from Charlie D'Angelo. I like that. And how about a music re recommendation while we're on the uh, the picks from you? Oh, uh, well, I mean, have you um, – have you heard Strong Arm of the Law by Saxon? Really good upcoming group. Uh, One I'll have to check out, yeah. <laughs> uh, most definitely. Um, <laughs> uh, sorry, you cut out for a little bit there, man. Um, so what's up next for Arch Enemy? I know you've got your Australian tour coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, you stopped by in Auckland first. What's on the mm -hmm. remainder for the rest of this year? Uh, yeah, we do. We do New Zealand. We do uh, Australia. Then we go to Japan, uh, and then it's back home again. And I think in May we'll start off uh, with the, you know the summer festivities. Uh, so it's a bunch of festivals and a bunch of headline shows throughout uh, throughout the summer. Uh, and then you know it's still a bit unclear about the fall. So, but we, you know, we have put quite a bit on our plate so far. Yeah. Sounds very busy, busy. And I was checking you out, man. Is this, is it your official Instagram account at Charlie D'Angelo? Uh, there's no. no posts on it. I'm wondering if that's actually you. No, that's not actually me. Oh, there you go. Someone's using that to pick up women, I think. Ah, uh, I mean, I have to look into that. Yeah. Oh, there you go. So is there any way that we can follow you on any forms of social media? Um, no, just, uh, you know, Arch Enemy, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, whatever. Love that right there, man. That is, again, yeah. old school metalhead right there. Absolutely love it. You can catch these guys live. It's Arch Enemy. They're heading our way next week, Valentine's Day. What better way to spend Valentine's than kicking it with Arch Enemy at the Gov in Adelaide on the 15th in Brisbane at the Tivoli, the 17th in Sydney at Metro Theatre, the 18th in Melbourne at Forum, and Fremantle on the 19th. Pick up your tickets through Metropolis Tickets, uh, metropolistouring.com slash Arch Arch Enemy 2023, and of course, hit these guys up, archenemy.net. Charlie D'Angelo, thank you so much for taking some time out, man. Really appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much, man.